What's up, everybody? Good morning. Welcome to a Tuesday edition of Morning Scone. Presented by Brock, the Badger's Orthopedic Clinic, and Hudco Roofing, hudcoroofing.com. Do business with someone you know, Hudco Roofing, hudcoroofing.com. Tuesday, last day here in, um, in Biloxi, we have meetings this morning, heading back to BR uh, around shortly after lunch. So um, Jacques Doucet in on AFR today. So we appreciate Brian Holland yesterday and Jacques Doucet today holding it down while, uh, while I'm over here in Biloxi for meetings. So I'll uh, be back in the saddle for AFR tomorrow. Um, looking forward to being back. And tomorrow's such a big day, too, with uh, uh, LSU basketball on the road in Lexington and LSU, uh, she's in LSU baseball on the road uh, at the Louisiana Tech. Really big game, so for both. Uh, got there in the uh, the headline, or the title of the video, I should say, that uh, Saints fired Cody Burns as the wide receivers coach. So, of course, uh, CJ wasn't retained. Um, uh, and so Dennis Allen needed to make that higher. And uh, someone asked yesterday, you know, why Dennis Allen was taking so long to make hires and so on. I, the other, the, uh, the coordinator hires and, well, P. Carmichael's being retained, but D.C. And they needed to obviously hire a wide receivers coach, so they did that yesterday. And the point, um, uh, the point I was making was um, uh, you just want to have your – your staff really in place for the combine. The combine starts next week. So um, really, as long as you've got those hires made by then, you're fine. That wide receiver coach get named yesterday. Maybe it's DC today or someday this week. So um, I, I like uh, bringing on Cody Burns uh, for a couple of reasons. Uh, he was just at Auburn. So I mean, you, 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 from an LSU standpoint, you also took Auburn's wide receiver coach. So Brian Harson has you know, another spot he's got to fill on uh, uh, on a spot. Well, excuse me, he was at Tennessee. Um, so uh, it's interesting because uh, Cody Burns played at Auburn. I think he did coach at Auburn as well. But um, uh, 33 years old, played at Auburn, was on the, the team that lost to Jameis, incidentally, uh, in the national championship game. Um, so... Uh, 33 years old, kind of offsets you know, Doug Marone, who they just hired back as the offensive line coach, and he's you know, Doug's 57, and you know, Dennis Allen's 49, P. Carmichael's 50. So you know you you bring some youth in, onto the staff. Um, uh, I don't know if Cody played. Uh, let me see. Let's see, he was on Malzahn's staff at Arkansas State, followed Malzahn to Auburn, went to Samford, Middle Tennessee, Arizona State. Uh, I don't think he played in the NFL, but either way, um, young guy, come in, coach receivers, lots of experience, I like it. So, all right, let's say some good morning, see what y'all got, fire away. Uh, congrats to Kay Doty, SEC Player of the Week. Whew. Somebody had to win it, right? I mean, after uh, after that offensive output, some someone was from LSU was going to win Offensive Player of the Week. So, uh, congrats to Kay Doty on uh, on that honor. All right, let's see. Uh, Kelly Presley, good morning. True Axe, good morning. Kelly Gross, Randy Dabdube, Scott Greenbaum, good morning. Uh, get back on the air. I'll be back on the air tomorrow. Uh, Jeff McKithen, good morning. Shane Henry, Brian Wynn, Robert Martin. Uh, do we move on from a waiter? Keep him. I, I'll, I'll be polite, Robert, since I'm, I'm not going to yell and scream this early in the morning. But I'm going to be as polite as I can be when I say this. Of course you keep Will Wade. To suggest that you move on from Will Wade is patently stupid. It's stupid. Um, I'm not calling you stupid. I'm saying the idea that you fire Will Wade is patently stupid. Um, I'll explain. Again for the benefit of those who have, you know, have um, not heard me say this before, but I'll say it again. Uh, when Will Wade was hired, uh, you fired Johnny Jones after he went 2-16 and 16 in the conference. The two wins were your fewest in the SEC play in 50 years, 5-0, half a century since you've been that bad in basketball. You were wholly irrelevant. 
uh, Will Wade comes in and immediately year one gets you to the NIT. Year two wins the SEC, you make a sweet 16. You have been to the NCAA tournament every year that Will Wade has been your coach and you're going back again this year. Uh, the COVID year, obviously you would have been an NCAA tournament team, but there was no tournament. Um, he has signed at least one five-star in every class and he's got his best class yet lined up for next year. Um, you're a basketball program that is learning how to win, how to create and maintain expectations for itself. This is not LSU football. It's not Duke basketball. It's not LSU baseball. This is a program that is not used to winning and is learning how to win. That includes the fan base to have to understand who you are. You're not Kentucky. You're not Duke. You're not even Gonzaga. You have no right to have an expectation of being in the Final Four every year. That's not what your program is. What your program is right now is a team that is a program that is expected now to be in the tournament every year. And that's what Will Wade has done. Uh, so you're keeping Will Wade. That's not even a question. To suggest anything other than that with the exception of the reason of the NCAA stuff, is patently stupid. Are we all clear on that? You lose games in basketball. Auburn maybe has the best team in the country. They just lost to Florida last weekend. Florida's not very good. Mike White might get fired. Auburn also lost on the road at Georgia. Georgia's, I'm sorry, Bama lost on the road at Georgia. Auburn damn near lost to Georgia. Beat them by two points. Worst team in the conference. It's basketball. You don't win every game you play. And sometimes on a given day, you don't play your best and someone nips you. It happens to every team. So teams don't go undefeated. The last undefeated national champion was Bob Knight's team in like 1978 or something. But anyway, point is, yes, you're keeping Will Wade. And to suggest anything otherwise is stupid. Are we clear? Are we clear? Glenn Thomas, Ron Ritchie, Kyle Gallo, midweek game importance talks are finally here. Oh, God. see in this room. Hey, Dad, good morning. Shelby Kelly, did you see the freshman from NC State at three homers in his debut and five on the weekend? I did not. Uh, Kyle Gallo, Robert can kick. Robert doesn't need to kick rocks. Robert just needed a reality check. Matthew Denicola, any news on the pitcher for tomorrow yet? Let me see. Normally, uh, the day before the game, uh, LSU will issue its, um, its game preview, its press release in which they will uh, announce who their starting pitcher will be. Uh, I do not think I've gotten that. So that should come at some point today from Frank S. And I don't know that Jay Johnson um, made that announcement. I know I noticed on Twitter, Brian Holland, who filled in for me yesterday, had Jay on the show on AFR yesterday, but I don't know if he, if he mentioned who he's planning to use. My guess is Will Helmers. Helmers didn't pitch this weekend, and I told you that Helmers or Floyd were going to be the guy on uh, – on Sunday. Uh, Cliff Nelson, good morning. Jesse Brown. Uh, and so an article that Saints are looking at Co DC. Um I don't I don't as a general thought like the idea of Co DCs. Um too many cooks in the kitchen, have one guy, that's the guy. But what I will say, Jesse, is if Dennis Allen's planning on calling the defense anyway, then it doesn't matter. Because then it's just the title. Uh Shane O'Mac, Trivia Carter, good morning. Uh, time for our opponents, DBs, to feel the burn. <laughs> Cody Burns, I get it. Uh, Tazzer Johnson, good morning. Read an article saying Nielsen. Okay, there you go. Cody sees Alex Barnes, good morning. Do you expect LSU to make it to Omaha this year? So, um, expect is tough. Um, is it a realistic expectation? Is it a realistic possibility for this team? Yes, it is. Um, but there's some really good teams sometimes that just don't make it. And here's why I would hesitate this year with LSU. Um, um, LSU. 
in understanding what happened this weekend with Arkansas and Mississippi State both dropping some games, but um, LSU's schedule is really brutal, the way it shapes up. Uh, they draw Florida and Vanderbilt from the east, both on the road. And they draw back-to-back -back road series against Arkansas and Mississippi State. That's just kind of brutal. Um, with that sc schedule, you may be the best team, but y you know you you drop games here and there. You drop a series like you may not end up winning the league, and let's say you end up with you end up seventeen and thirteen, uh, just whatever. Um, that's probably not good enough for national seat, so you may have to travel for a super regional if you make it, and you just never know. You know what I mean? So it's a little harder for me to, to project. Do, do I think this team has the pieces? I do. Paul Batts, good morning from Houston. Looks like Gordy got you yeah, the Rain Man suite. Uh, it's not the Rain Man suite. You know, just a regular room here at uh, the Beau Rivage. The lovely Beau Rivage. Matt Plavidal, good morning. All right, Scott's coming up. To look for, you got it, Matt. Glad we are able to get that done for you, man. Thank you for your patience also. Uh, I know it just took us a little time to catch it, to, to get caught up. Uh, Wendell Norman, good morning. Eric Wilderotter, uh scarred forever on Code DC after the LSU experiment. Yeah, I, I don't know that there's many examples of it working well. You know. Tim Gotro, Rams hired an OC, so Hankton is staying, right? Uh, that would be my guess, yes, which is fantastic news. Tazer Johnson, if it's not Jameis, what quarterback would you like to see the Saints go after? What if the Falcons cut Matt Ryan? Would he make a Super Bowl contenders? I don't believe so. Um, uh, if you look at Matt, good question. Let's do this exercise. Let's look at Matt Ryan's stats over the since the Super Bowl year. Um. Okay, so since 2018, here's Matt Ryan's, um, well, you could look at his MVP season. Okay, Super Bowl year 2016 is MVP season. Okay. Uh, 38 touchdowns. He went from 38 to 20 to 35. 26, 26, 20. Um, interceptions, seven in his MVP season to 12, back to seven, then. 14, 11, 12. Double-digit interceptions each of the last three years and four of the last five. Um, yards, 49, 44, so 50 yards shy of 5,000 in his Super Bowl year. Then big step back, 4,095. Then had that jump again in 2018, 49, 24, so just under 5,000. Then 4,400. 44-66, 45-58, 39 this year. I know there's a lot of numbers and it's kind of boring, but remember he also had an extra game this year as well and still threw for fewer yards. Um, I don't think Matt Ryan's good anymore. Serviceable, sure. Is he elite? No. Not anymore. Wendell Norman. Spurge, what's good? Scott Drew struggled with Bay Baylor for years to raise Baylor's brand of basketball. It's true. Patience. Uh, Brandon, good morning. Destroy that like button. Yes, please. Uh, YouTube. Facebook, like the page, share the post. Kevin Trice, big midweek game coming up. Matt, know you're pumped. I like midweek games. I do. I, and tomorrow, honestly, I'll tell you honestly, I'm excited about tomorrow because it's a road game against a ranked opponent. You'll learn a lot more about this team tomorrow than you did this weekend beating Maine three times. Eric Waterrotter, these insane fire Wade questions got me thinking, which LSU co coach is currently on the warmest seat? Is it Beth Torino? It seems equally insane, but I can't think of any other coach. No, um, Beth's not in any trouble at all. Uh, I mean, why, what would she, they've won so consistently there. Jay Clark, obviously, is good. Um, you just hired I mean, it. I, I mean, the answer is Will because of the NCA stuff. I mean, that's, that's the answer. Uh, because if they get popped, you never know. I mean, it could be show cause. I mean, we just don't know. I mean, that's that's the answer. But if you take that out of it, um, I don't know. I mean, if people forget Scott has hired a soccer coach. So, I mean, he, you know, I think Sean Hudson is a soccer coach. He uh, So, he hired her. Um, I 
I mean, there's, I don't know, is the tennis coach any guy? Well, that's the Cells. It's Julia Michael Cell. Um, Beatling. Uh, Shane O'Mac, thoughts on the Zion dumpster fire. Has anything come out since the uh, All-Star game? Uh, you know, the, the word before was that um, that they might, uh, he might try to get back after the All-Star break. Um, Team Zion, Zion, Dame, Donovan Mitchell. Huh. Well, I can't imagine... I mean, if look, if you're if you're New Orleans and you're even contemplating trading Zion, um, you know you better get a king's ransom. I mean, star player and a boatload of assets. Um, I would hate to see it. God, I would hate to see it. All of the excitement that surrounded um, Zion coming to New Orleans. You know the the awesome video when they when they won the lottery and then when they actually made the pick. Uh, yeah. Got to get the guy on the, on the floor though. Uh, Paul Bats, Lee Van told me to tell you more bunting and midweek games matter. <laughs> uh, Rap and batches, Tracy Poole. Uh, what a weekend for LSU baseball, indeed. Trivia, to be fair, look at what Kim is doing within the first year. That's actually not fair trivia because. There's like eight teams that try to be good in women's basketball. Um, and I don't mean that in any way to be disrespectful, but the sport isn't as mature. It's Here's the comp I'll give you. Women's basketball is, and, and by the way, I'm not discrediting. Please don't misunderstand. That's not what I'm saying. It's almost like what LSU baseball was 20 years ago. Or where not where college baseball was 20 years ago. Um you had the same teams in Omaha basically every year because it was the same teams that were investing the resource into baseball to be really good. And as Skip Bertman showed, look, you can build a beautiful ballpark and recruit good players and fill it and turn it into a revenue generator. More programs sunk money into it, and now more programs are good at college baseball. You're also seeing players choose to bypass the minors to spend two or three years in college because they'd rather stay in nice hotels and fly private and they can keep improving there as opposed to riding on buses, staying in motels and all that crummy life of minor league ball. But my point is with women's basketball, you still have a, there isn't a ton of parity. So you can, um, no, come on, trivia. You know what I'm saying? I'm not being disrespectful. Come on. That's not funny. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like it's a, it's a sport that is women's college basketball is still a sport that is maturing. And until more programs sink resources into the sport to make it profitable, it's it's going to be a money loser. Y'all, I mean, w- listen, LSU women's basketball at LSU lost over two million dollars last year. Lost two million dollars last year. But Scott Woodward came in and said, "Listen, we're going to invest this money into the coach, and look at what's happened now." You had 13,000 people at the basketball game the other night. You're going to, you may not make money year one, especially because you have to offset Kim's contract, but you may not make money year one, but you're going to be closer to a break even point. And then, you know, subsequently you will be able to make money. But historically, it's UConn, it's Tennessee, um, it's Stanford, it's, you know, of late, South Carolina has obviously had a tremendous amount of success for a, a while, Mississippi State women did. But you know my point? Like it's, uh, Baylor, obviously, where Kim was. But the point is, it's it's the sport itself hasn't gotten the investment of resources to grow across the country, which is why it's easier to get a foothold quicker if you can get the best players and, and jump right in. That's that's what I mean. You know what I mean. So it's not it's not comparing what and what to say. Women's basketball and men's basketball have an immediate success. Uh, Matthew Dinicola, uh, Scott Borch. Can LSU baseball keep up the offense against SEC play? Uh, Scott, if you think LSU is going to score 50 runs in an SEC weekend, I, I don't think that's going to happen. Um, but 
I do, but here, here's the point that I made yesterday, I'll make again. Um, if for everyone who's going, yeah, well, it was just Maine. Um, actually, I was texting with Peter Burns yesterday from the SEC Network, and we were kind of having this conversation. He said, I'll give him credit for, for the line. He said, it's like if you shoot 65, but you shot from, from the red tees, like, you still shot 65. I mean, you still had to keep it straight, and you had to chip and putt, and yet, you know what I mean? Like, LSU scored 50 runs, and yes, it was against Maine, but they still were had plate discipline. They were patient. They took walks. They worked counts. They sprayed the ball to all fields. They, they hit homers. I mean, it's – I don't think they're going to score 50 a weekend in SEC play, but I think – I think you've got a very potent offense. Yes, I do. I think you're going to hit one through nine, and it's going to be fun. Um, Barry Day, Jason Horn, uh, Glenn Thomasy, uh, John Emery comments truly solidified his commitment to LSU. His excitement of playing for the Tigers, great addition for Brian Kelly. I don't think it's John Emery. You talking about John Emery or Emery Jones? You talking about the offensive lineman Emery, Emery Jones? <laughs> Mark, LSU basketball in the bubble. They're not on the bubble, Mark. They're squarely in the tournament. Uh, latest bracketology had them as a seven seed. They're not on the bubble. They're not close to the bubble. They're they're in the tournament and look, they're they're in the tournament. Their their net is. Y'all forget sixty eight teams make the fucking tournament. Excuse me. Well, let's go. Um. LSU's net ranking is 16. Only Auburn, only Kentucky, Auburn, and Tennessee have a higher net ranking in the conference than LSU. I, LSU, for example, Bama's at 22, Arkansas's at 23. LSU's at 16, y'all. They are, this, this is not a bubble team. They're in the tournament. Like, they could lose to Kentucky, Arkansas, Missouri, Bama. They could lose their next four. Then they'd be on the bubble. But they could lose their next four and still make the tournament. Um, Henry Gordon Bennett, more than Matt, what hour of AFR was Jay Johnson? I really don't know. I, when I'm not there, I don't listen. Robbie Welburn, I just saw it on the tweet. Robbie Welburn, what's up? Chris Rabelais, Daniel Lawrence, David Tolson. Uh, Zion's close to being Greg Oden. I'll disagree with that because here's the thing, Jason. Greg Oden's injuries were like debilitating. They were, they were debilitating injuries that you couldn't return from. Like right? when a seven foot dude has microfracture, knee surgery, and stuff like that's bad. You know, foot injuries and all that stuff. Like Zion tore his meniscus. Like he's got. Some, I mean, he's overweight. It, that there's a big difference. Like Zion can certainly come back physically. Greg Oden couldn't physically come back from his injuries. Uh, Michael Cook, good morning. Greg Phillips, like no one was looking to trade for Greg Oden. You know what I mean? People want Zion. Thomas Caluet, morning. Zion has been a big disappointment. Who do you think pitching Wednesday for LSU? How do you think Johnson will handle midweek games? Um, again, I think it's Will Helmers tomorrow. I could be wrong. I, again, I'll, I'll tell you what I know, and I, I don't. I'm making that assumption based on the fact that I was told Sunday was either going to be Helmers or Floyd. Floyd got the ball pitched well, and Helmers didn't pitch at all this weekend. So that's my guess is that Helmers gets the ball, but I don't know that. <laughs> Um, how did, will Johnson handle midweek games? I mean, I, I don't get the sense that he's looking to do the, the Johnny Holstaff thing, um, you know, with nine innings, nine pitchers. I don't get that sense. Uh, Lenny Moss, if Mulkey keeps winning, the fans will respond. The money will grow, especially at a school like LSU. Well, they already have, Lenny. I mean, you had 13,000 people at, you know, there for a women's basketball game against Florida Sunday. I mean... They have responded. It's it's just like gymnastics. Gymnastics is awesome now, and people go pack that thing. It's, um, you know, they, they still gymnastics still loses money because tickets are like five bucks or whatever it is. There aren't as many meets, and the team flies private when they go on the road, and they have hotels. And call, you know, it's it's expensive, um, so it's not a, a revenue generator, but it never will be. But people will, but people will support it. If it's purple and gold and wins, people will support it. <laughs> Um, uh, 
Let's see. Let's see. Quan, Marcus, PJ, we need to keep players, do you think? What players? Damn, bro, you got you to gotta use punctuation. <laughs> Come on, dog. Um... What play, all right, what players are must we bring back? Um, all right, so I would love to have Quan back, but I think Pete Werner played well enough last year that if you move on, you're good there. Uh, they're going to re-sign Marcus Williams. They wouldn't have franchised him last year. Otherwise, they fully plan on They love him. They fully plan on having him back, so I think he will be. And I saw where Pro Football Focus rated P.J. Williams as the Saints' most improved um, defensive player last year. And I like P.J. Williams as a as a dime back. If he's playing the nickel or the dime, I mean, I guess realistically, C.J. Garner Johns is playing the nickel. So if P.J.'s playing dime, that's great. I don't love P.J. Williams as my outside cornerback, but that's why you know, Paulson and Debo keeps growing and getting better. But um, remember, the Saints aren't in – everyone does the cap hell thing, but this is how the Saints set it up. Last year was an odd year because of the COVID year revenue was down, which means the salary cap dropped by like $30 million, which is why they had to – let players walk, like Sheldon Rankins and Trey Hendrickson and Malcolm Brown and, uh, you know, they, they Emmanuel Sanders, like, they didn't have a choice. They had to let those guys go. It's not the same this year. Like, I was talking to Mike Triplett on AFR before, uh, before it left, you know, last week, and Mike said, just in his own calculations, just restructuring deals, he got to, like, $101 million in cap space to restructure. So if y'all set the seven, that's like 30 million to play with. So they're, they're going to be good. Like they, they did the purge of the roster last year. That's not going to happen again this year. Sports fan 79, Joseph Fallgraf. Good morning. Paul Batts. It's building a brand. Some people fail to see the intangible asset. Uh, let's see. Do, 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 do. Alex Barnes. I think Zion wants to go to New York. He'll probably not play this season, come back, ball out next year so he can demand a trade. Well, remember this, Alex. Only New Orleans can offer him the rookie max extension, which is 200 and... Um... So Zion, at the end of this season, is eligible to make the rookie extension worth $181 million. So the rookie max will be worth 25% of a team's salary cap. So they're estimating five-year $181 million. And New Orleans is the only one that can offer him that. So could they do a sign and trade? Potentially, yes. But if they want to keep him, he's re-signing with New Orleans. $181 million. Like, he's not going anywhere else. That's why it's designed that way. Uh, Kelly Presley, what's up with Fon? No surprise, he has not pitched. He did pitch. I pitched Sunday. Uh, Sunday, they closed the game with Razelman in the eighth, Fon in the ninth. I love that setup, too, by the way. Charlie Cavell, good morning. All right, just about done, y'all. Smash that like button if you haven't done so yet. YouTube. Uh, Facebook, please like the page, share the post, like the page, share the post. Always shout out to Brock, the Baton Rouge Orthopedic Clinic. Need an orthopedist? Go to Brock. After Hours Clinic is open on weekends, and of course, Brock is hiring. New year, new career. Holler at our folks over at Brock, the Baton Rouge Orthopedic Clinic. Locations all over the greater Baton Rouge area. Primary lo location inside of the Surgical Specialty Center on Blue Bonnet. And of course, Hudco Roofing, hudcoroofing.com. Had a uh, new Hudco hometown hero. Replaced a roof for somebody. They said, hey, I'd love you to do an NIL deal with, uh, I don't think I can mention her yet, but it was an LSU gymnast. So we reached out to the LSU gymnast yesterday to say, see if she's interested in, uh, in accepting. So it's that easy. Uh, if you hire Hudco to do a roof replacement, um, or roof repair, whatever, hire Hudco. We'll take a portion of our net and commit it to an NIL deal with the athlete of your choice. So... Um, Creative way to get in the NIL space and uh, and to get any athlete a deal. Right. Um, <laughs> Trivia, they need to purge Hill. They're not going to purge Taysom Hill, man. He, um, 
but he's definitely not, he's not going to play quarterback. You know, uh, Taysom's contract. Everyone always gets so hype about Taysom's contract. Oh, ninety million. It's not ninety million dollars. It's that if he plays, if he starts at quarterback, his deal is four years, forty million. So it's an average of ten million per. Um, this year, his cap hits twelve million. The base salary is one point one. So they could actually restructure him. Um, and then next year, the dead cap money drops to six, then four, then two. So. Whatevs. Yeah. All right, Jason. Jason asked for the Hudco jingle. Ask and you shall receive. Hudco Roofing, HudcoRoofing.com. Um, could Raisman be a starter? I don't think so, Brandon. I think he's going to stay in the bullpen. Uh, if it were up to Mark, Taysom would be the only quarterback. <laughs> uh, Colby Martis, Mintz, been the king of NOLA, huh? Uh, yeah, man, looks like Mincy's having a good time. Got to see him on Friday in Baton Rouge, so good to see Mincy in town. All right, y'all, I think we're just about done. Thanks so much for watching. Y'all have an awesome day. Uh, YouTube, on your way out, do me a solid smash that like button. It's the thumbs up. If you're not familiar, if you're watching on mobile, just X out of the live chat. You'll see the thumbs up. Just hit the thumbs up button. Hit live chat. Com comments come right back. YouTube, uh, like the page, share the post. We appreciate y'all greatly. All right, y'all have an awesome, awesome, awesome day. And uh, we'll see you back from the homestead. Manana. Peace.